Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. We are uh, into the ninth week of this NPTEL course on nonlinear adaptive control. And I think by now all of you have gained sufficient uh, expertise and knowledge in order to be able to uh, tackle adaptive designs for uncertain autonomous systems such as the satellite that you see in the background. So in the last week uh, or in the last session, we were still working on our unmatched design. And what we had seen was uh, essentially a cooked up example for which uh, we had these unknowns. Right? The unknown was unmatched therefore we assume that the p is unknown and for this unknown p quantity we actually uh, designed an adaptive integrator backstepping based design so we came up with two different parameter estimates p hat and p bar with update loss and a feedback controller in order to uh, stabilize the system that is drive x1 and x2 to 0 right so we continue to look at these stabilization problems the tracking problems are as i mentioned not significantly different i would strongly recommend all of you uh, to look at the kkk book that is the christic kanalakopoulos kopotovich book uh, for more details on uh, you know, how to do this all right so so this is uh, rather important that that all of you do use these book references i am after all uh, constrained by whatever time i have and i cannot cover every single thing that the book contains so uh, the book is definitely um, more advanced material and extensions of whatever we are discussing in the class and so i would strongly urge all of you to look at the book because that's what will give you uh, more handle on how to solve uh, the more real more practical problems although whatever we are discussing here in the course uh, itself is sufficient for you to be able to uh, deal with a lot of practical systems yeah great uh, so what i want to do now is that uh, we understand our um, issue with you know the current design right uh, that is we have to create two different parameter estimates corresponding to one parameter uh, and so we want to alleviate this with the extended matching design right so how do we do this right so let me start here um, what i'm going to do is well first i'm going to label the lecture number as lecture 9.2 right and we start working our problem right so i'm going to rewrite the system say uh, quickly um well i'm going to cheat a little bit and copy okay so what do i do i just paste it here right and for this system i know that p is unknown of course right p is unknown right p is assumed to be unknown so the First thing that we uh, want to do is that we don't declare uh, a first state, a first stage uh, Lyapunov candidate, right? But uh, we do uh, define an X2 desired, which is essentially the same, right? If you see the X2 desired, that is exactly the same, right? It is going to be exactly this guy, right? Sorry, the negative of this guy. So the X2 desired is just motivated by the dynamics, right? You just try to cancel whatever you can and introduce an estimate. So that's exactly what we do, right? So X2 desired is the same. And so that's going to be minus F X1 P cap minus K1 X1, right? Introduce a good term and try to cancel 
as best as possible the back term right so uh, therefore the estimate gets introduced but notice that we are no longer going to declare a uh, candidate lyapunov function v1 we are not going to declare uh, we are not going to do lyapunov analysis to come up with a p hat dot yet right instead what do we do we define the z again exactly in the same way right so that's what i will do next i will declare the z as x2 minus x2 desired right which is actually equal to x2 plus fx1 p cap plus k1 x1 right so this is exactly the same as before okay now once i do this right so now i declare my v right i declare my v uh, not like this right because i i don't have any v1 at all yeah so but in a rather uh, simpler way i would say right i declare my v as one half norm x1 squared plus one half norm z squared plus one over two gamma norm p tilde squared where p tilde is p minus p cap right so i never introduced a second estimate i did not design a v1 the first stage the apnoff candidate i did not already define a p hat dot all of that will be done using this candidate lyapunov function all right great so let's move on and actually compute this v dot right so v dot is going to be what it's a x1 transpose x1 dot plus z transpose z dot minus uh, 1 over gamma p tilde transpose p hat dot okay this is of course using the definition of p tilde okay so now if i substitute right i'm going to substitute for the dynamics so x1 transpose is uh, f x1 p plus x2 plus z transpose z dot is now this entire mess right i mean right this this entire thing so i'm going to sort of copy this guy here right so i'm going to copy and paste this guy here right so so that's what is z transpose z dot right and of course i have still have my one my one over gamma p tilde transpose p hat dot all right i still have that same term here right now notice again that unlike the previous scenario p hat dot is not defined yet right so that remains as it is yes p hat dot remains as it is it is not defined but again if you remember the extended matching design discussion the good thing is p hat dot is something that we specify yeah so we know what it is right so we know what it is so we are not quite uh, you know worried about uh, what is p hat dot. yeah i mean whether we can implement it or not so we can always use the control to cancel this p hat dot if we so desire all right except now we are going to carefully club all the terms in the unknown right uh, let's first see how we go about that okay let's first see how we can go about that all right uh, so so what do we want to do what we want to do is uh, we first want to uh, write x2 uh, as always in terms of uh, z plus x2 desired so that is uh, again equal to z minus k1 x1 minus fx1 p cap 
yeah so this is actually going to turn out to be x1 transpose z minus k1 norm x1 squared plus x1 transpose fx1 e tilde right so once i substitute this guy here this is what i will get from the first term okay so before i put in the uh let's see uh, i'm wondering if i should yeah absolutely why don't i uh, substitute for my control also so i will choose my control as minus omega cross x2 basically try to cancel everything i can uh, so this is for this guy then i will have minus del f del x1 and here it's a k1i plus k1i just so that the dimensions match uh, x2 this is to deal with this term right minus f x1 p hat dot that is to deal with this term uh, then i introduce a good term which is minus k2 z and then finally i want to deal with this term which should give me which for which i will have del f del x1 plus k1 i uh, f x1 p cap right because i cannot implement a p so i put in a p cap right so this becomes my uh, control uh, i'm sorry this is not my control well i mean that's okay i think i will continue to retain this as my control uh, no problem yeah uh, so what do i get from the second term here after substituting this guy is a lot of cancellation so i will have this guy go away i will have this guy go away i will have this guy go away yeah and then i'm left with a lot of nice terms so i'll be i'll end up with minus k2 norm z squared this is coming from this guy this multiplying this right um, then i will end up with uh, one more term uh, due to this and this together and that term is now uh, plus z transpose uh, del f del x1 plus k1 i just this i the purpose of this i is to just ensure that the dimensions of del f del x1 and the second term match yeah remember that times fx1 times a p tilde okay so this is what you get from the second piece and finally i'm left with minus one over gamma p tilde transpose p cap Right. So this was our control, right? I mean, our control is this guy. Notice that uh, I had already mentioned that this x1 term, additional x1 term is not required because, uh, so we will also not use that x1 term here. Okay. So don't worry about that because I, I still have this additional term left, but we don't have to worry about that term at all. Right. So now what do I do is I take, I have my minus k1 norm x1 squared minus k2 norm z squared plus x1 transpose z, these three terms. And then I take a p tilde uh, transpose common and I have uh, f x1 transpose x1 from taking transpose here and in fact i can take something common here plus again fx1 transpose from taking common transpose here i get a del f del x1 plus k1 i transpose z all right so that's what i get uh correct 
minus a 1 over gamma p cap dot minus a 1 over gamma p cap dot so what do i do i just try to drive this guy to zero right because i cannot do anything better than that right so that's what i do i just try to drive this term to zero and for that i choose my p hat dot as gamma times fx1 transpose times x1 plus del f del x1 plus k1 i transpose times the z all right and once i make this choice i'm left with uh, so this is my update law right just this so once i've made this choice my v is basically minus k1 norm x1 squared minus k2 norm z squared plus x1 transpose z and i know that this guy is less than or equal to half norm x1 squared plus half norm z squared by standard completion of squares yeah using a b is less than or equal to a squared plus b squared divided by 2 right so this entire thing is less than or equal to minus k1 minus half norm x1 uh, squared minus k2 minus one half norm z squared all right pretty simple pretty straightforward yeah it's pretty straightforward okay and i know that this is negative semi-definite yeah if k1 k2 are strictly greater than half let me write this properly all right and so i'm done right as usual i prove that x1 goes to zero z goes to zero and because z goes to zero and x1 goes to zero i can easily show that as x2 also goes to zero as t goes to infinity just like before so nothing changes in those steps yeah now notice that we have only one control law right one Lyapunov function right ah, sorry one Lyapunov function in the previous page here right and 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 one parameter update law all right which is what you would want yeah now uh, if you notice so these are the standard similarities anyway that I always point out even in, when we did the general extended matching. If you notice the p hat dot, you see two terms, gamma f transpose x1, that's the first term. And you see that's the same as gamma f transpose x1 here for the p hat dot. And the second term is gamma f transpose del f del x1 k1 i transpose z, the gamma f transpose del f del x1 k1 i transpose z. That's the second term, and that's exactly identical to this delta f transpose del f del x1 k1 i transpose z. Yeah, so what happened uh, because we declared only one Lyapunov candidate, the p hat dot that we get is actually uh, is sum of the two, uh, you know, derivatives that is, it's the sum of the p hat dot and the p bar dot in the adaptive integrator backstepping case okay so that's one important thing to note the second important thing to note which i which you already talked about is the uh, you know uh, sort of drawback of this method is that the control now contains the derivative p hat dot all right control contains p hat dot and as the distance between the control and the parameter becomes larger and larger the derivatives also become larger and larger yeah which can lead to implementation troubles and noise in the control implementation all right so this is uh, essentially the idea of how to implement your uh, standard adaptive integrator backstepping and also the extended design yeah so we've seen both of them so i hope that all of you will be able to now um, actually uh, 
uh, use these design methodologies for your uh, real applied problems. All right, great. Uh, so now uh, we are sort of ready to move into week 10 lectures. Uh, again, we are in week number nine. We seem to be always moving forward uh, or, or, or we always seem to be ahead. Yeah, but we're not really ahead because we have some more additional material to cover. Uh, this weeks are more for homework reference than anything else. Yeah, so uh, we are ready to move into week 10 lectures. And uh, the key idea that we uh, talk about is the tuning function adaptive design. Right. So we already uh, improved on one design flaw in the adaptive integrator backstepping, which was that you have to sort of, uh, you know, create two parameter uh, estimates per parameter. And we were, of course, left uh, with one issue in the extended matching, which is that you have the derivatives of the parameter update, uh, or the parameter update law appearing in the control law, right? So theta hat dot and p hat dot, these things appear, uh, which is not nice. So we, want to alleviate that issue also and uh, that is why the tuning function adaptive design method uh, is a popular method or an improvement over what we have looked at until now and so that's what we sort of want to do uh, so this is what we are saying tuning function uh, in adaptive design helps us avoid the drawback of the extended matching design method all right so that's the idea uh, so we have a, a few definitions first, right? So we have a few definitions first, and I will go into some uh, detail of nonlinear uh, control uh, in this set of lectures yes, for us to be able to understand uh, these definitions better, right? Um, so for now, I will uh, sort of uh, define, you know, one, one or a couple of these definitions, and then we will start with uh, the more uh, nonlinear control material in the subsequent session. Um, so we say that uh, this system x dot is fx plus cap fx theta plus gxu. You're already used to looking at this system because we've been seeing this sort of a structure everywhere in adaptive integrator backstepping. Right? So this kind of structure is standard. Again, this is standard uh, construct in the KKK book, right? Because so there is a drift term, then there's a term depending on the unknown parameter, then there's a control dependent term. So that's the same structure here too. The only assumption here is that U is now just a real number, right? It's a single input system. Yeah. Again, these definitions can be generalized, but to make the treatment, uh, you know, reasonable and easy to follow, uh, you use the single input uh, assumption here. So this system 1.1 is said to be globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, right? So we've already seen global asymptotic stability, but here we are talking about global adaptive asymptotic stability, all right? So this system is called globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable if there are two things, right? A control law alpha, there's a feedback law alpha, which depends on x and theta hat because theta is unknown. And a adaptation law, which is uh, tau, which is given by tau and the gain gamma, uh, that says that theta hat dot is gamma times tau, again, depending on x and theta hat possibly, such that the x theta hat states are globally bounded and the x states go to zero as t go to infinity. Okay. So tau is, of course, called a tuning function. And that's the term here, right? The tau is called the tuning function right this is the important uh, piece of terminology here but so this is what you want uh, need for a system to be globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizing now remember that we did see something similar here also where we said that uh, you know there exists a v readily unbounded and all that stuff such that uh, the v dot is negative semi -definite, negative semi definite at least, and we essentially want to claim that w goes to zero as t goes to infinity. Right? W goes to zero as t goes to infinity. Right? 
uh, here it is a little bit more specific. We are not just happy with W going to zero because we don't know what kind of function of state and parameter update or parameter estimate W is. Here we are uh, directly interested in claiming that uh, the x actually goes to zero, right? So, so we want existence of uh, an update law, uh, sorry, uh, a feedback law and a parameter update law and an adaptation gain such that the states remain bounded, x and theta hat remain bounded, and x goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. Okay, so this is slightly different from the previous construct. Also, this definition is not uh, in terms of any Lyapunov candidate or anything like that. There's no v here in this definition. But of course, it should be evident to you that if such conditions hold, then there must be, uh, there must exist such a v. Yeah. So, so this is uh, one of the key definitions which we will use yeah global adaptive asymptotic stability or globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable right adaptive because theta is unknown so the everything there is a theta hat in the feedback law and the update law and stabilizable because we want x to go to zero right we don't care about theta hat converging to theta as all in as usual yeah so this is a definition Okay, so remember this is a definition. We are defining this terminology. All right. Um, but of course, this is what we want in all our problems. We want the existence of such uh, our feedback and adaptive loss. So this definition makes sense to us. Yeah. So what we want to do uh, in the subsequent session is uh, talk about the ACLF, adaptive control Lyapunov function. But in order to do that, I realize that all of you need a little bit of a refresher at least on control Lyapunov functions themselves. Yeah, so that's what we will do. So anyway, so what did we uh, look at in this session? We had already done the unmatched uh, adaptive control design via the standard adaptive integrator backstepping, which leads to a two parameter uh, update loss or two parameter estimates per parameter. Uh, we wanted to uh, get rid of this uh, two parameters per parameter, uh, two parameter estimates per parameter uh, using the extended matching design. And that's what we have completed today with the design and analysis of the same. Uh, we are now starting to look at the tuning function design, which improves upon the drawbacks of the extended matching design also, because the extended matching design brings in uh, the derivative of the theta hats and the p hats uh, which we don't like right so we want to move into this tuning function design method uh, which of course uh, we started off with defining global globally asymptotically uh, globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable systems um, and we want to move into defining adaptive control Lyapunov functions and before we do that we are going to in the subsequent session uh, look at a little bit of theory of what is control Lyapunov functions themselves right so we have already seen candidate Lyapunov functions and Lyapunov functions but we have not really talked about control Lyapunov functions and uh, the theory behind it so I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about control Lyapunov functions all right um, so that's it for this session and I hope to see you folks again in the next session. Thank you.